Hello everyone. So uh, this video is about the dreaded leak down test that you need to do for your engine once you get it put back together. Um, kind of an awkward moment because you're proud of your build and everything, but <clears throat> you know you, you almost don't want to do the leak down <laughs> test because you're afraid. You know if you find a leak, you're going to have to take it back apart, but. The reality is you need to do it so that you know what you're dealing with. And if you if you put the engine together the right way and you squared up all your parts, you shouldn't really have anything, you know, as a problem on the inside. But basically what you do is, uh, you know, you want to make sure your flanges here are good and, and square and uh, decked. Sometimes people take those to the machine shop and they deck them, which means they make them perfectly flat, not just here, but also your manifold here, but all your mating surfaces. Um, I checked all mine. I didn't need to do that, but check yours to see if you do. Um, leaving the, the intake uh, risers on there. Um, you know, this is all not torqued down to spec, but pretty tight. I'm going to leave the rave valves in a um, little on the fence about this because I just know the inside of these ray valves have bellows with spring clamps and O-rings, and they're not really designed to hold a lot of pressure, um, but I'm going to try it anyway. I'm just going to start with that and put as you know much things on it as I can for the test, but uh, essentially, you can buy a block-off plate kit, which they're kind of expensive. I'm going to make my own. I'm going to show you how to do that. But you block all that off, and then there's really kind of two different circuits that you're pressure testing. One is the crankcase and everything on the inside of the engine minus the water jacket. And the way you do that is you have that capped off, and uh, you basically put pressure to this nipple here. That goes right into the crankcase. And if you have everything sealed off, it should hold like, uh, I think it's 5 PSI for three minutes, uh, something like that. Um, if it doesn't hold that pressure, it means something's leaking somewhere. Uh, there's different things you can do. You can spray soapy water on the outside of all these cracks to find the leak. Uh, similar thing that you do for the cooling system. You know, the water jackets and the cooling is on a separate thing. Those shouldn't cross over, you know, into the uh, crankcase or anything like that. So there's a drain at the bottom, and then, of course, you got your intake here and then your temperature sensor. And so you have to have all those plugged off and just choose one to uh, pump it up with pressure. That's how you do that. So uh, that's it. So oh, also, um, you also need, obviously, you got to have a, a pressure pump. This is the homemade one that I made. You probably saw it in my other videos for pop-off testing on the carburetors. You can use the same thing. You know, you only need like less than five PSI um, for this. Um, but basically, uh, I actually tested this because I wanted to make sure there wasn't any leak on this thing, giving me a false reading and making me think my engine's leaking when in fact it's actually the my little homemade gizmo here. So I actually uh, closed, clamped off the end of this. I pumped it up to about 4 PSI, and I dropped it in the uh, sink underwater and actually noticed some bubbles coming up. So uh, that's what that looked like here. So after I saw that, uh, I just, it was right here. I didn't have Teflon in between this fitting and the screw thing there. So I did that, retested it. So this is good to go. There are no leaks on this part. So now we're going to um, make our block off plates. So to make the block offs, um, ordered this plate. I, don't, I think it was like uh, six inches by 12 inches off of Amazon. Wasn't very much, 20 bucks, something like that. Um, it's a quarter inch, so it's pretty thick. The thicker, the better, so that it won't warp and bend. And then I got some uh, eighth inch rubber um, gasket material, pretty soft and thick there. Again, you know, better to be thicker than thinner. Then uh went after it with a, <clears throat> a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. 
what I did was I took the gasket and I used that as a template for my holes. And all I really did is just marked off the holes. There's no need to get fancy, you know, just you know, a square is going to fit perfectly, you know, on here like this. Um, so mark those off, drilled those out on my drill press. Same thing with these. These are for the, uh, the intakes. Um, doesn't look all that pretty. I didn't waste a lot of time on this, but I filed around the edges just so that it wasn't sharp and wouldn't cut my fingers. But, um, and then after drilling those out, I actually also, you know, I drilled them. I drilled the little hole all the way through because there's a, you got your little alignment pins here. So you got to be pretty accurate about that. But then I kind of chamfered this with a bigger drill pit, uh, drill bit so that it's everything smooth. And then sort of did the same thing with the, the rubber gasket material. Again, using this as a template, put that all on there. And then I, Glued these on with a little bit of uh, black RTV, which I don't, there it is. That. Not so much to seal it, just to hold it on there to keep it from flopping around and losing it and getting dirt in it and stuff like that. But got all the holes aligned and cut out. Um, oh, also... I went to the, because you can't really use the existing bolts that go on here. They're they're a little too long. You could shore them up with washers and stuff like that. But I just went to True Value and I got some shorter bolts. Um, you don't have to get the stainless steel. You don't even have to get the Allen heads. I just did it anyway because I was there. And I might use these later. Um, so I got those. I got some washers. Um, these are exactly the right depth to tighten down on these and not bottom out in your threaded things there. So I got those, I'm gonna reuse this. That's for the stud on the bottom that's here. You don't wanna take that out. For these, these are a little longer because you know I'm going all the way through these uh, intake risers here. Um, you could probably do a pressure test without those. I just decided to do as much with everything on it as I could. Uh, but that's kind of what those look like. You know, and so now we just need to take all these things on and put it on and tighten them down. Put the block off plates on, tighten them down. They don't have to be super tight. You just want it enough to make sure you're pressing that rubber against there and it's good and sealed. that. We're going to put our plate on here for the exhaust. Goes on like that. Bolt and washer. Bolt and washer. Got our nut at the bottom. And then we're going to, I'm not going to torque these down. I'm just going to tighten them down the, with the old German Guten tight, just enough where I know it's a good seal. Okay, got our block off plates on and those sealed up great. They fit really well. Pretty happy with those. However, when I first did the pressure test, it wouldn't hold pressure for more than about 30 seconds. So that worried me. Um, just randomly, I ended up taking the rave valve covers off and it made a difference in how fast it leaked down. So I figured I was onto something. So I just took them out and cleaned up the surfaces real good with acetone and put some duct tape, ordinary duct tape on it and pressed it down. You can see it's it swelled up pretty good, holding pressure. Um, as we're talking here, that needle hasn't moved. We'll come back and look in a second, and I'll show you. But did the same thing over here on the coolant system, which is a separate system. 
you know, you got to block off your nipples there, your uh, temperature sensor, and then your drain at the bottom. But it held pressure as well. But, you know, by and large, the bigger concern is really um, what's going on here. So uh, since we've been talking here, you can see hadn't moved. So this thing's rock solid, no leaks. Pretty happy about that. A little worried at first, but now I can sleep pretty good about it. So hope this helped you. That's how you do a leak down test on a 951 Rotax for a Sea-Doo. And uh, thanks for watching as always, and we'll catch you on the next one.